this is an 8335R. And so now we're gonna get on it and try to get this thing torn down and and start the rebuild process. Um, let's go ahead and open the hood on this girl. Back in the day when this one was bought, it was top of the line ILS suspension, everything, you know. Uh, pretty nice, pretty nice setups these tractors are. Ah, uh, let me get my light on my, see, we got an exhaust leak or something going on there. Uh, let's get the headlamp. I found my other one. <laughs> I was cleaning up the shop and I'm still, <laughs> I'm still cleaning up. I got to clean this bench off because a lot of these parts are going to be put on that. I've just been so damn sideways with work. Yeah, we got something going on here. Carbon everywhere. Manifold gaskets or something or yeah. This is what I don't understand about this light here. It's blinking on and off and shit it drives me crazy. Yeah. Good old nine liter. Should be a nine liter. Come over here and look at this here. Uh, yeah, it's a nine liter. Anyhow, I'm going ahead and uh, no counterweights on the front, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to tilt the hood forward like I usually do because the weights are off the front of it. I don't know if it'll sit down on the bolster or not. I guess I'll try it. Yeah. I'm trying to think though, I might take this 3126 in this transmission and take my crane and set them somewhere over there and then square the tractor up because I got a truck coming too that I need to do an in frame on. Damn. And I'm thinking about this. If I get this tractor situated, because I'm going to have to back the truck in here. If I back the tractor and get it situated to where I can back my truck or I can pull my well, I can pull my forklift out and pull in beside the tractor that way I can get to it with my crane. Actually, shit, I don't need to move it anywhere. I can pull through here right there and I can come around just like that. Yeah, no worries. No worries at all. I can get to that with my crane. So I'm just going to leave all that shit where it's setting for now. But anyway, uh, I'm going to start tearing stuff off of this. Get the hood tilted forward. We'll see what happens there. I'm not certain if that's going to sit on that bolster or not. I don't know. Matt didn't even tell me what what fan or what... Uh, I don't know if he got what kid he got for it. I'm not certain on that. To be honest with you. I am not certain about that. But uh anyway, good times, huh? Okay, we got the good old hood out of the way. Now we just basically basically what you're gonna do here is you're basically gonna gut everything around the engine. Uh these ILS steering lines here. You'll have to disconnect them. What you do here is you basically separate this engine from the frame right here, which is, you know, the oil pans incorporated into the frame. And you'll lift it up and kind of back off to the right. And we'll just start uh, getting all these side panels and all this wonderful stuff out of here. Let me get my impact. And Parts tree. Be pretty handy. Right there on that counterweight bolster. Eight 
8000 series are my favorite series of tractors for John Deere's. You know, I think I'll thread these bolts back in there because I'm going to have a whole lot of other parts that I could actually utilize. The old parts tray for would be much better. Oh, well, look out. What did I do with the gun? Yeah, these ILS uh, front ends, they were pretty nice on these. I can see what somebody's replaced this is very common. Uh, those leak, those are per prone to leaking like a sieve. One thing I don't like about any of these newer 8000 series is that piece of shit fan they put on there. Just garbage is what they are. And these, these 8000 series had a centrifuge oil separator, kind of like a Packard does. And it's centrifugal and it separates the vapor from the oil and settles in there. And there's a filter you got to change and all that good shit. But that's that's it right there. Okay, so lots and lots of shit to take off here. Let's go get the ground off the battery here. Try to decide. I think it would probably be better to just pull the post off. I was going to take it loose right there, but if it's still hooked to the battery, it could touch the ground somewhere else and it would be better to unhook it from the battery. I should have grabbed my forklift and got this damn transmission. It's a one here that's a guy swapped out and he left it here. Gonna do something with that thing one of these days. Oh yeah, it's kinda it's kinda nice working from my shop. I got all of that stuff really organized in my shop and I can't find it all. My service trucks are a disaster. And I'm, I'm working on that. I mean, as you can see, I've been cleaning up in here too. And I, this will be like a 16, 18 hour day today because I still got to move forward on this. <laughs> and that's, I was trying to make room for the Peterbilt that's coming. I got a 389 Peterbilt coming, the in-frame engine on it. And I got a Freightliner Cascadia with a DD-15. I guess it windowed the block on that one. So he found another engine. It was a good engine somewhere that so he bought. And so I gotta swap engines out in that one. Golly, I can't get them things apart. I spread them a little bit with my I used to have a battery post spreader. That was one thing that got stolen years ago and I never have replaced it. And I really miss it. Or this very occasion right here. Now, let me figure out how I'm going to spread those terminals. Ugh. I'm trying to see. I think those are inching. I see engine 316 for not taking those loose. I'm telling you about these here. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't even think I've got a three quarter inch universal somewhere. Right here. I wonder if I can get that in there. And then I'm going to need my extension. Hang on, let me grab my longer three quarter inch drive extension. Okay, I think maybe 
What the hell? I'm looking for <laughs> the battery. I gotta buy some more batteries for my damn impacts here. This is the newer, well, this gun here is the three quarter gun. Oh, it hit me right on the toe. <clears throat> that did not feel good. Whoo, that hurt. That's gonna have black toe. <laughs> Now I've been, took about a half a day off Sunday and I was sat there with my wife and we watched, uh, I've been watching this channel uh, called Ghost Town Living. And I, I, I thought it was just, fa them old miners just fascinate me, you know, of, of the conditions they had to work in and, and, uh, why is this son of a bitch not going on here? What the hell's your problem? But, uh, hang on, when I get done rattling on this stuff, I'll reiterate what I was talking about. I think it's going to be easier to try to get it started on there first and then get the gun on it. Anyway, this name is Ghost Town Living, and it's about Saragoro Mine. And, uh, it's actually in California, but there's a lot of cool mines that I want to go see. Uh, I want to go, and I want to go into the mine. I mean, uh, I just, that stuff just fascinates me. Those guys, I mean, those guys busted their ass, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I mean, the conditions that they had to work in. I mean, most of that stuff back in the late 1800s, they were either doing it with teams of horses. I mean, they'd put them tramway head frames up for the to move the ore and stuff like that. Uh, what the hell we got going on here? And I don't know, I think about the things, that's kind of where I get my work ethic is I, well, I, I think about it when I get, when I get kind of down and I, you know, down and down and out on stuff and I'm not liking the way things are going, then I look at, do a little research and you guys can look it up. There was a guy named William Burrow Schmidt and he had a couple claims going and he had to move his ore um, along a dangerous, dangerous ridge line. And he decided that he was just going to tunnel straight through to his claims. And then he could bring his ore straight through this half mile. He was basically going to tunnel himself right through the mountain. And, uh... I don't remember what those were. Those are Phillips. I don't know if I got anything short enough to get in there. It's going to have to be a socket and a quarter inch drive ratchet. But anyway, that guy, I, I don't remember the dates. I remember it was like 1906, something like that. You'll have to look it up. But I'm going to tell you what, that guy started digging that tunnel and had to get, he spent 36 or 38 years digging that tunnel with a pickaxe and they said multiple hammers you know and our cores or ore cars our cores and uh anyways he did that whole thing by hand uh, and it took him 30 something years to do it and the bad thing about it is is he got about three quarters of the way through it and they'd already built a road to access his mine for a bunch of other claims. And But you know what the old guy did? He says, I don't care. 
I'm gonna finish it. <laughs> and the old son of a gun, he stayed, he hung in there till he finished it. You don't know what hard work is. I mean, but the guy would, I guess he would work on ranches and stuff to kind of keep himself fed, you know, until he got done with his tunnel. But you guys look it up. You can go actually, I think it's, I think it's a part of the, um, I think it's part of like the uh, federal parks or something like that owns it now. Like they own every damn thing else. The whole damn country is going to be nothing but a damn... It's cool that they preserve places like that, but at the same time, I get frustrated that all these people, all these landowners, they see big money because the government's paying for their land, so they, they sell it to the government. You know, and pretty soon the goddamn government owns everything. You can't go anywhere. I mean, I'm serious. It, it's kind of kind of disappointing. So the gist of what I'm saying is that just when you think that you've got things really bad, you think of that guy that dug that tunnel, <laughs> you know, it's not that bad. I wonder if you could just leave all this on there and just, I see a bolt here. No, it's not gonna happen. Man, I dropped it. What did I do with it? Where'd it go? Got to find that. Shit back in there, see if I gotta find that bolt. <laughs> uh, will that hose come past that bracket? Looks like it will. You know, that shit's gonna come off there anyway, but. Uh, this bolt here doesn't even look as tight as that. There's a spacer or something that's going on it. Yeah, I just like that. I like the, the history of the whole thing, you know? That's what really fascinates me about all that kind of stuff. There's that bolt right there. Alright, okay. All this bolts will be accounted for and I won't be looking for bolts and you know that's the thing. A lot of guys say, why don't you just throw them in a magnetic part tray? Well, you know, I've I've done that. But then I'm sitting there fishing. Okay, what length bolt goes here? What length bolt goes here? Because everything's a different length. Some of them are shouldered, some are not, and you're like, well, which one was it? Which one went here? It's just simpler if I just you know, kind of stick them in there. That's my thinking anyway. Um, remove this aspirator pipe. I'm gonna have to remove this bracket here that looks like maybe it's partially bolted off. Hang on. I was wrong, I forgot that bracket. I forgot that bracket is part of the pipe. It's all tacked to it. Man, I gotta get on my damn hay squeeze project. I gotta get so much. Just everybody's waiting on me. Man, it's gotten worse. Like I just it is what it is. I mean, do what you can. That's about all you can do, really.
<laughs> those older, like the 8200s and stuff like that, man, those, those, those pipes that ran across here like that, oh my god, what a nightmare. What a nightmare those were to, to get out of there. They were no fun. Of course, I get get to watching something like that mine deal. Then I get intrigued on other mines and start researching things further. And I get on the internet and I was reading about the Comstock load in Virginia City in that mine. And I guess that guy there, I can't remember his full name, but basically he was kind of a con man, is what he was. And he had come. There was there was three Irishmen that were that had found the silver in that place. And that was like one of the largest silver mines, I guess, in, in recorded history in the United States. But he basically, this guy was kind of full of shit, you know, and told these guys that had basically found the silver there that Oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm part owner of this land and kind of, you know, basically he conned him into finagling uh, him into the claim, which, you know, I guess, and I, I read two or three different things about the guy. I guess he was a lazy son of a gun, didn't like to work. His family couldn't stand him, but last name was Comstock. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, you, 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 you see that kind of stuff. It's kind of funny. I don't know what this manifold is leaking at. I was trying to eyeball that maybe and see if I could spot that manifold leak. Looks like maybe somebody might have changed that recently or something. I don't know what the hell is leaking to you. Oil cooler leaking? Is that what's been leaking on it? I'm not sure what kind of kit Matt got. We can reseal all that stuff. Okay, uh, what's next? Okay, let me get the diverter sealed out of the way, which is right here. This is what they call the air diverter diverter shield. And I don't know. I probably can't get back in there with that. I'm gonna have to get an extension. And there's two here. I'm trying to remember. Splits in two. Looking for the extension that I had here a minute ago. I guess I need to lay all my tools on the bumper of my truck. That way I can kind of keep account for them. So I'm not sitting here looking for them all day, huh? The, uh, damn, what the hell do I do with it? I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I go to put all my tools up this afternoon and go home. Ugh. Yeah, sometimes you're reading the directions on these tractors and the, the terminology gets you kind of all thrown off and you don't know what the hell you're... <laughs> Half the time what they're talking about, you know. Come on, man. What are you doing to me here? Stay there. There it goes. And I gotta get these two loose. Get them loose 
and get my little Milwaukee. Get my little Milwaukee cordless there and buzz those off. Remember, I don't think there's anything on that side. Well, guys, we're still disconnecting and removing stuff to access the. Somewhere there's an engine under there somewhere. Ah, somebody had had this puke tank out of here and didn't even bolt it down. It was just sitting there hanging on the hoses. So we'll go back together. I better put some bolts in that, I guess. Probably be a wise thing to do. Did I grab the wrong size? Or what? what did I do? No, that's right. boot would come off there a little bit easier than that. Hang on a second. She's being a little stubborn. I'm probably gonna have to damn near. I can't get my impact on the damn thing. I'm gonna knock the damn camera off. Nasty fool. Well, she's just gonna be a hard ass the whole way. So I gotta pop these lines out of here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that line's gonna have to come off too. But I gotta get this. I gotta get this shield out of the way. Okay. Whew. Good times, huh? Good times. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that. It just tells you in the book. Just remove the shield. Didn't tell you nothing about that charge air cooler line that you gotta pull off. None of that shit. I'm looking at this and I don't think I'm gonna get it around. There's no way in hell you're going to get it around that line right there. It's not going to happen. That line 
needs to be removed. All right. The intake air pipe. Okay, that should be enough, I hope. Well, there's not even tight, it seems like. I wonder if I can muscle this one here off. Oh yeah. I got you now, cupcake. Very important piece of pipe there. Must inspect that thoroughly before you put it back together and make sure it doesn't have a crack or a hole in it and dust a brand new engine. What does the old turbo charger, it's been changed to. Okay. Okay, so these tractors with ILS, they have upper and lower accumulators. I mean, you're basically going to have an accumulator for the top part of the cylinder and one for the bottom part of the suspension. So these upper ones got to come out of there. So, uh, but you have to bleed the system pressure. Do not just start winging that bastard off of there. You're going to, it's going to be a disaster. I don't know what would happen to you, but I don't think it'd be very good. Um, let me get all my shit out of the way here. Well, I gotta find something to lay on. I don't wanna lay in that crap. Hang on a minute. Okay, so anyway, uh, there's a couple valves here. There's a skid plate. Now, here's the skid plate. Pull this skid plate off right here. And then you'll have to get in here and make sure you're, you're not where you're gonna get smashed because she's gonna come down on you. The tractor will lower. I'm trying to remember which way to turn them. You push these in. I'm saying you gotta make sure you're not you gotta make sure you're not in the way there man that one's already turned okay so the suspension lowered on me uh. Just got to really be careful with those ILSs when you're doing that and don't <laughs> I did one one time I had the drain bucket under there. I thought oh, it'll clear it I started going down on me a smash the drain bucket and antifreeze went everywhere and it was a disaster Okay, so here are your accumulators right here, but Let's see I can get on that one. Let me find a wrench that will fit that accumulator I don't know. I probably might just go ahead and pull the line off anyway because it appears to me that it's going to be right in the way. I got that line off of there. I'm not sure if I got the right size wrench though. Inch and five eighths. Is that going to work or? Oh boy, I don't know. It's like something in between inch and five eighths. It's not quite the right size. That 
is not correct. Let me find out. So inch and five eighths, inch and a half small. Uh, what size would that be? Oh. Um, try an inch and seven sixteenths, maybe not. No, 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 what am I thinking? Inch and a half too small. What am I thinking? No, 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 no. Ah, uh, inch and five, inch and five eighths is too big. Inch and a half. Man, I don't think I've got anything in between like that. To be honest with you, there's another inch and five eighths. It'd be inch and nine sixteenths. It's probably metric, and I don't have... What did I do on that before? Well, that sucks. Hmm. Yeah, an inch and a half is too, big, uh, too small for it. Man, I don't know, man. I got it. I got it with this inch and five eighths, I think. I can get another bite on it. Let's see if I can get back in here somewhere. Like that. I'll get you, Missy. There we go. I got you. Showed it some tough, didn't we? <clears throat> Had these kids that worked with us there when I used to work for the nurseries a long time ago. We had a 9620T. And we were harvesting at the time, and somebody had called me out in the field. And we were pulling the right track frame and everything. And I had them kids up there, Kyle and Talon, helping me. And I. I told them what to do. I told them, I said, pull that. And then, you know, that thing had a category four hitch on it, great big hitch on that 9620. And it was up at the time. And I told them, I said, make sure you get in the cab, start it, let the hitch down, then pull the lines off. Don't rip them lines off there, that hitch up. That's a big, heavy hitch. And uh, something bad's gonna happen if you do that. Well, I came back later on, and uh, <laughs> I got the accumulator. I don't know. It does not appear to me that you're going to get it out through the top. I wonder if you just lay them down in there. Is this front bolster all this? Little, I think we'll just kind of lay them. Uh, oh, it'll come out of there. I see. I'll come out the bottom. Anyway, I come back to the shop later on to recommence helping those two. And Talon had just pulled the line off and listened to what I said. And just basically, oh shit, I grabbed the wrong wrench. Grabbed an inch and five eighths. I asked Kyle, I said, where in it? Well, I walked in the shop there and I could see oil. And that that ceiling in that in that shop was like 40, 50 feet high. It was a big, tall building. And there was oil dripping off the I-beams. And I said, what in the hell? I'm about to pull that hose off. It's hitting the hose and then they've got... Ah, uh, the suspension position sensor zip-tied to that. But no, Talon, he just, he didn't get hurt, but he got a bath. And I asked Kyle, I said, where in the hell's Talon at? And he says, oh, he's up at the, he's up at the trailer taking a shower. <laughs> I said, is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. I said, he lucky he didn't get it. Hey, you know, man, you could really, really get hurt doing shit like that. I'm serious. 
You know me, I'm not much of a safety Sally type guy, but stuff like that though, I mean, you get your arm or your leg, if you're standing on that hitch, or you got your hand or something in here on the suspension and you let that suspension down, especially I'm here by myself, I'm gonna be here till somebody comes and gets me. When you're by yourself like I am all the time, you really, really got to pay attention to what you're doing. The guy can get screwed up pretty bad and then you might wind up dead because nobody's going to come around because you're by yourself. Okay, the next upper accumulator is off. And you're probably wondering why, why'd you take those accumulators off? I'll tell you why, because the, what, what we're doing here is once we get all the stuff off that we need to take off that was required, um, the way this is gonna work is all these frame bolts where the actual engine mounts to the frame of the tractor these here there's like 24 bolts that go around and the accumulators you can't get these bolts out unless you get the accumulators out of the way and same thing with those steering lines back there you can't get those frame bolts out without getting those out of there so the next thing is air cleaner housing has got to come out um I gotta get this ear off here that's holding this line on. There's, let's see here. I'm trying to remember how I did that. I took the one bolt out and pulled it off is what I did. Yeah. And then uh, I think there's something bracketed the other side and you gotta, and uh, then you gotta pull this bolt out here. Then there's a support up here you pull out. And, uh, which side of the, which side does that come out of? I'm trying to remember. Which side? Yeah, I think, I'm trying to remember how that came out of there. Oh yeah, you gotta, you gotta take the heater hose. This is a heater hose manifold. You gotta pull that line off and then you can come out this way with it. Yeah, and there's another bolt right here. Well guys, it's about all I'm gonna, what I, what I gotta do there on this is, I forgot all about it, I got the air cleaner all loose, but once I get, here's what we got left to do. Uh, we basically, right here, gotta get the turning tool on the engine there, and then we'll turn around, pull the bolts out of the coupler there, and then uh, we'll get over, walk around the ladder here. We'll have to pull the fan off, fan drive and all that shit, lay it forward. And, um, and then, uh, what else? Uh, of course, there's some more plumbing up here. All of these lines, this whole line bundle has to come, basically, everything will come loose here. And then you'll undo all the clamps and brackets and you'll lay the whole line bundle down off to the left side of the the whole assembly and then you can pull that air cleaner out this side um, it won't go out the other side now that I remember because this neck here where that aspirator line goes in hits right there you just can't get it around the turbo and all that stuff when you pick these engines up off there off of here they actually come up and they come back so that it'll have to come back a little ways to get it to clear so you can get it on out, but basically we don't got a whole lot left. Uh, 
we got to get the line bundle off get that air cleaner out undo the coupler and then start pulling all these bolts out here and start lifting on it and then we'll rebuild it